Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I am Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm talking again about Mask AI. It's, well, it's super cool, my friends. It's super dang cool. And it's also super useful. There's a lot of things you can do with it. And this video is specifically about a couple of creative ideas in using Mask AI to help you just do different things in your photos. I've got a photo here, boom, I took it on Route 66. This was in the little town of Santa Rosa, New Mexico. I have already gone in and done a little bit with raw develop and also erased power lines. And so the photo started like that, a bit darker, blah, 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 power lines in the upper left. And now a couple of things in raw develop and then one click, power lines were gone. I did nothing else to them. And I've got this base photo. Now what I wanna do is show you some of the fun and creative things you can do with Mask AI because it's super cool. To be clear, it's not perfect sometimes, including this time, I need to refine the mask a little bit. Not hard, just takes a couple of minutes. Even so, still a massive time saver, which is what I like about it. So I've got this in place. Now there's one thing I wanna do here that you may not do very often in your photos or may not think about, but I wanna show you. I've already done the basics in raw develop, but I'm gonna go back and develop and I'm gonna go into transform. And if I drag this horizontal to the right, you can see what it's doing. It's basically helping me kind of fill the frame with that other car, pulling it a little bit closer. It's almost a little bit of uh, added distortion, but I like it. And so something to think about because what I wanted to do is basically get that car to fill up that right-hand side a little bit better. So I basically rearranged the photo slightly. There it is before, and there it is now. So I think that's looking a whole lot better. Now this is where I wanna start using the uh, Mask AI capability. I'm gonna go with structure, and I'm gonna go to 100, simply because this is a rusty old car, two of them really, or car and truck on Route 66. If you're not cranking up structure on stuff like this, what's the point in having you know, taking photos of this stuff, right? Because that's half the fun of it. So I'm going to go to Mask AI or Masking and then into Mask AI. And it's going to calculate and figure out what objects exist in the photo. And now that it's done that, you can see it picks up transport. I'm going to go ahead and click on transport. And I'm going to go back here and I'm going to click on Mask Actions and show the mask so that you can see what it's picked up. There it is. Pretty reasonably good job. Actually, I would say a really good job but not a perfect job. So this is where I come in with the brush. And what I wanna do is get on a race and I just wanna clean it up a little bit. You know, every now and then I see some little weird lines that are sticking up like over there. I'm gonna shrink my brush. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and then I'll fast forward the video. Okay, there we go. So I have taken the mask, done some minor refinements with the brush, just a few seconds of work, but I've got the cars isolated and I think looking good. There it is before. There it is now with all that structure on them. So I'm gonna go make sure I'm in the masking menu and I'm gonna go ahead and click copy because I'm gonna use that mask again. The next tool I'm gonna to get is dramatic because again, I'm just jacking this stuff up. I mean, what the hell, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and bump that up pretty high because I'm gonna crunch that up. And once again, I'm gonna use that mask. So I'm gonna paste so that it's just applying to the cars. And then maybe come in here and I'm gonna pull that saturation back. I don't wanna lose the color. I like the color and I'm gonna use that color here in a little bit and maybe bump up the brightness a little bit. All I'm doing here is really just adding a little bit more oomph to that car or those cars, I should say. Maybe pull that down a little bit. Maybe put that at about 60. Bottom line is, you have a lot of power and flexibility to do whatever it is you want to do with your photos. Once you've created that mask, you can just lather, rinse, repeat. And what's so good about it is it's allowing you to really separate the subjects from the background, which will come into play here in a minute. So now that I've got that in place, I'm going to go into Accent AI and I'm going to bump that up as well, simply because, hey, why not? I'm just kind of going over the top, if you can't tell. And once again, I'm going to paste the mask because I just want this applying to the cars. Accent AI, as you know, gives it a nice little bump of a lot of things, color, contrast, light, that sort of thing. So coupling that with the dramatic just really pops those cars, and makes them stand out. So now that I've done that, what I want to do is get a little bit of separation between the foreground and the background. So that's where structure AI comes into play. And here I'm going to go negative 100 just for effect. I'm gonna go into masking, mask actions, and paste. I'm basically using that mask again, but I want the opposite. So if I show you, I've still got the cars mask. I want the inversion of that, 
which basically means the background, the sky, the ground, the trees and stuff like that. I just want to remove the detail and just smooth those out. So I've done that. And now that I've got that in place, I'm going to copy that mask and let me show you. There it is. I basically just smooth all that out because I'm creating a little bit of separation between the foreground and the background. Now you don't have to go to 100. I'm doing it here for effect and you can boost if you want to further amplify that. I don't really. And in fact, I, in reality, I'd probably take that down probably to maybe a negative 60. All I'm doing is creating a little bit of separation, like I said, between the foreground and background. Actually, I think I might go to about 75. I mean, what the heck? We're having fun here. Just playing around with a photo. Doesn't really matter to me if it's over the top. That's actually the intent of the photo. I'm also just trying to show you how you can use Mask AI creatively to adjust photos. So I've got that in place. I'm pretty happy with it. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and just copy this mask because I'm going to use it again, which is my background mask. And what I want to do is go into color and I'm going to take the saturation down negative 100. I'm just separating the foreground from the background. Go ahead and paste in that mask. And I've now basically created a selective color or a single color, whatever you call it. I call it selective color. There's, I think, multiple names for it, but all I've done is basically completely desaturated everything but the two cars. The color remains there. The color is gone from the background, so further separation. Color, detail, light, all that applied to the cars. Color, detail, light, all that removed from the background. So that's a fun and interesting way to use Mask AI to create that separation and, frankly, just to have fun editing a photo. Now, while I'm at it and I've got that background mask copied, I think I will go into develop and actually just slightly decrease the exposure in the background. So once again, I'm in develop. I went to the adjustment, drop the exposure, and now I'm going to paste the mask. And there we go. It is just impacting the background. So maybe adjust this a little bit, maybe not quite so dark. All I'm trying to do is, again, just further refine uh, and enhance the separation between the two. So something like that looks pretty good to me. Still got a couple of things I want to do. Now I used color earlier in the background, or I should say the lack of color. I completely removed the background color, but I want to do something else in color. So what I want to do here is actually play around with the hues. So I'm going to go into masking and I'm going to go into paste and I'm going to make just a minor adjustment here just so I can show you the mask, mask actions and show those tools don't show if uh, if there's nothing done to the edit. So I slightly move saturation by like one just to show you. What I want to do is invert because I just want to play with the cars here. So I had the background mask copy because I've just been copying, pasting, and inverting the mask back and forth. I got the mask in place on the cars. I want to go to adjustments. And what I want to do here is hue shift. Now hue shift allows you, as the name implies, to shift the hues. So I've got red in the cars, but as I start to drag this, you will see I can make those cars kind of any color I want. So I could do something crazy and fun like green, or I could come over here and do something a little bit more blue. And basically, as you shift the hues, basically what it does is the hue that you're on, it seems to use a color that's essentially opposite that on the color wheel. So I'm kind of in the green. The opposite is kind of the magenta or purple. As I get to yellow, it gets more to the blue. As I get to red, it really gets into the blue. So I'm going to go all the way negative and basically just take that hue shift and go completely uh, opposite of where it was. So I went negative 180. And so I shifted the rusted red orange color in the car and made it a bit of a blue color. So that's another idea. Isolate and separate your subject and then come in with hue shift and change the color of it if you want to. Now, while I'm at it, I've got these blues in place. Maybe I'll just add a little bit of saturation and vibrance simply because I've already got the cars isolated. I've changed the color to blue. I'm now increasing the saturation and vibrance across the isolated subjects, which is the car. So it's popping that blue. And while I love rust, trust me, I love rust. I used to shoot rusty things all the time in HDR and just totally just crush those pixels and jack it up. I also like to just play around with colors. And in this case, I think the blue looks pretty nice. Although obviously I love the rusted look too. This is just an example, not necessarily what I would do on the photo, but I want to point out that you can do a lot of creative things, separating the foreground from the background, changing the hues and adjusting the colors and saturation levels, making it a selective color photo, lots of options, lots of power. That's the fun of Mask AI. So the only other thing I think I might would do is come in and maybe just slap a little bit of a vignette on the image simply because I just want to, you know, really pop the light on those, uh, those cars. So maybe not a heavy vignette, 
but I definitely want to use the inner light, maybe something about like that. So if you look at the before and after, you can see they're a little bit darker in the center of the photo, uh, a little bit flatter on the outside. Now slightly darker on the edges, slightly brighter in the center. That's really it for this one, my friends. I just wanted to walk through a few creative ideas about how to use Mask AI to just kind of do something different and fun. The AI capability in the masking helps me identify the subjects. I did refine it. I would say along the edges, I didn't do an amazing job. Take your time, get it precise. But the fact that it identifies certain objects, there's nine different ones, as you may have heard me talk about in that previous video, saves me a lot of time masking, allows me to just jump in, dive in, get creative, have fun. But that's some ideas about how you can use Mask AI to creatively enhance your photos. Separating the foreground from the background, changing colors, making it a selective color, lots of different ideas here. Have fun with it, my friends. I hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't. I'll be back soon. I'll see you then. You guys take care of yourselves. And until then, adios.